like to go over time at all. I'm a little nervous. I am um, always a little nervous about going over time. So, oh, thank goodness. Okay, I'll stop the timer. You may regret that. Uh, my name is Julie. Uh, I was born Julie Hahn. I am now Julie Watsko. I'm here having gone through part of the visa immigration process um, that, uh, that I have already spent over $10,000 on. Woo! Um, but I am here because of marriage, so I'm very happy. I am staying in Melbourne, um, and I'm bringing, I brought here uh, my 15 years of working in games. Ah, that's me. Uh, I also am learning to be a blacksmith. I am also learning to write in PHP. Um, and I am not scared to learn anything. And a lot of that is because I have learned how to learn because of video games. So um, I have contributed to 225 published games and counting. <laughs> Um, and thousands and thousands of toys that you can buy pretty much anywhere. Um, and most recently, in two, 2015, I changed careers completely. I was a project manager and a PM um, producer for video games and projects. Um, I run Kickstarters as a hobby. And I decided I wanted to change, and I knew that I could do this because of the fact that I have played video games, and I know. So um, part of my talk is about resiliency. So what is resiliency? Oh, that's the wrong way. There. I asked of my friends, what, what picture describes resiliency? And overwhelmingly, they told me a plant growing in an inhospitable environment. And well, that's kind of what resiliency is. What resiliency is defined by in the dictionary, it is the power or ability to return to original form position after being bent, compressed, or stretched. Elasticity. Or the ability to recover readily from illness, depression, adversity, or the like. Buoyancy. Um, what part of video games do you think that is applied to? The ability to fail and go back to the beginning and start over and learn how take the things that you've learned along the way and come back and apply them the next time you go through that level. When I first started, this is how I paid for games. Um, I played Atari and Pong and yes, this I had to find this in all of my stuff to get this picture because that picture doesn't exist on the world. Um, but a handful of quarters is how I was able to play games. There was no Nintendo, there was no Atari. We were really poor. Um, so I had to go and play games at an arcade. When I failed, it cost another quarter. So games were kind of expensive and holy crap, we should do that again. Probably not, nobody will pay for it. Um, but it taught me persistence. It taught me the fact that I could try and get the higher score the next level. And then Nintendo came out, and this dog. Um, if anybody remembers, the first Nintendo came packaged with Duck Hunt and Super Mario, Bro or Super Mario Brothers. I played the crap out of this game, and this dog was my nemesis. But I was able to finally beat the game, but it, I knew that I could keep going. I could go back to the beginning and just try again. And that comes through in a lot of things. We can fail and then we can start over. Because I'm starting over in a whole new country and I'm starting over in a whole new job. But I know I have this inherent knowledge that I can do it because I've done it multiple times. This was one of my favorite games. Um, Netrunner, Nethack. Um, and Angband, which is really old school. Angband is another example of a game that if you failed, you died, and you didn't get to keep going. But it taught me that when we make our decisions, we have to consider them. So while as Duck Hunt, I failed, I went back to the beginning, Angband, and NetHack taught me that my decisions matter. 
and the decisions I make change how my game will play out, but it may fail, and that was okay. Then I learned how to play this beautiful game with a red rose on a cover. Now, my parents were anti-D&D. Dungeons and Dragons was of the devil. And so I played this game. And if anybody doesn't recognize this, this is Vampire the Masquerade. Um, storytelling became a big piece of it. And I learned that there's a story inside of each of us. It's the story of our lives that other people perceive. But there's a story we tell ourselves every day. There's a story that, oh, I can get up and go do these things. I can get out of bed this morning. Um, I've suffered from complex PTSD um, because of child abuse. Um, I have also been affected by domestic violence from uh, uh, my first husband, and I have made it through that. And part of that is because I recognized that the story that I was telling myself may have had flaws, and I needed to go back and reset my level and start anew and retell my story to myself first so that my story made sense to me that then I could go and change the world or my experience or my, my, um, my arrangements. So one of the things about changing your world is knowing what the world map is, knowing what you can transform. So this was the best part I, of this game is I always knew, hey, if I go this way, I can get to level five. If I go this way, I could get past that and just skip it, but I might miss something along the way. So understanding that there is a world map and look for it in your life. Look for mentors or people who can show you the world map, um, people who've gone there before, and reach out to them. It's dangerous to go alone. Realize that there are people out here that want to help you along the way. Um, and that they, are, they may not always be older and wiser. Um, they may be younger and wiser. So don't discriminate on that. Now, sometimes you can't take out things by yourself, and that's okay. I learned that a lot by playing uh, World of Warcraft. That guild, my guild was very important, because without my guild, I couldn't take on the big boss monsters. And you have to find that guild of people that you can have no Leroy Jenkins amongst them, <laughs> but that you know that we can each support each other and beat the beat the one of the hardest boss monsters I've ever. <laughs> I don't. I'm not that great at that game. <laughs> but tests and de I I always um, concept in my brain in my personal story that tests or deadlines or challenges that I know that are coming are like a boss monster. So I once I've reframed my internal story to that, it becomes a lot easier. I know how to get past a boss monster. I know the things I need. I need my friends. I need to prepare. So that becomes that boss monster. And then sometimes it doesn't work. But again, we're going back to that beginning of the next level. Let's go to the next round, and we'll learn from it, and we'll continue. Every time that we may fail, we take a moment, regroup, um, and then you can put another quarter in, or at least I did a lot, and try and get past the next, uh, next opponent. Apparently I'm doing great on time because I'm nervous. Um, <laughs> so the next thing is something that really stuck with me. Um, if you don't know who Steven is, I highly recommend following him on Facebook and Twitter. He is one of the amazing people that I've met along the way, and he posted this when I was working on my talk, and I'm like, can I please post this on my talk? Because this is one of the most important things about your internal story, 
is that the best thing you can do for yourself is give yourself permission to fail. Once you do that, you have given yourself freedom because that fear of failure is what keeps a lot of us back. And doing the biggest and most amazing things in our lives is a lot easier when we're not scared about failing. So chase your dreams. And that's all I have. So I'm not into gaming at all, but today's been inspiring. If I had to play one game, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so my background is in board games and video games and card games and, ro and role playing games and, <laughs> and, and, and oh goodness. Oh, you're stumping me. Yeah, I will, I will happily talk because really it's about a personal connection. So figuring out what types of things you enjoy doing will inherently ex explain to me what good games to recommend would be. So that's, that's why that's a hard question to answer just from a baseline of not knowing much. Can I have another massive round of applause for Julie?